So today I would like to talk a bit more about uh, virtual education. Um, um, we noticed last year, uh, so we have uh, a <coughs> platform, a <coughs> platform, uh, testing them automatically. And we noticed uh, on July last year some uh, Heisenberg uh, when putting the guests, and we didn't figure out why. On going a bit deep down, we noticed it might be related about cash, how we handle cash in that. Uh, before going explaining the cash, I would, before explaining the problem exam, I would try to explain the cash. Um, the first thing is that um, the cash is um, coherent on, a, on our architecture. It can scale from a small, a single CPU to a massive, CPU, uh, massive servers with multiple <coughs> processors. Um, what we offer is that the implementer shows how it can expose the cache to the, to the software. It can be visible to the software, it can be invisible to the software, or it can be a mix of the both. Um, on, so there is enough attraction of the architecture to um, cope with all this difference. This will allow to the to implementer to decide um, what would be the performance, the power, and area of the cache uh, on that CPU. So for instance, we can run a VM on a smartwatch or like the three bit here, or we can run the same VM on the 15K servers. That's, that's how the architecture has been designed for a maximum flexibility. Um, so the cache architecture now, it's a modified hardware architecture. So you can see on the side, um, so there is multiple level of cache, so you can see level 1, level 2, level 3, and then the memory. Um, there is a uh, snooping between the, the multiple level of cache. Uh, there is separate high cache and day cache, so there is a separate cache for fetching the instruction, getting the data, and there is no snooping between the boards. Um, the cache can either be PIPT, uh, physical index, uh, physically packed, or non-aliasing VIPT <coughs> for virtual index physically packed for the data cache. On the two cache, instruction cache and data cache are meeting at the point of unification. So for instance, we see that the level one is instruction cache on data cache, and the level two is why they, they unify to a single cache. On there is a level three system cache, I will go a bit into more details later on. Um, the cache is controlled by attributes in the batch level. So there is a memory type, like uh, normal memory, device memory, and there is cacheability and shareability. Uh, cacheability is to say um, if it's write back, um, like for instance, if it's write back, um, if the policy is write back, how to write in the, in the cache. The shareability is how much do you share between domains. Um, there is also two enable bits. One, uh, for enabling the, inter uh, the instruction cache on one for enabling the data cache. It's actually not an enable, enable switch, it's more like an overhide bit. On, this is not generally so, uh, visible, uh, this is not generally visible to normal software. Um, there are still few exceptions, so that, for instance, um, when you execute uh, code loading or when you modify the code generation, you will have to do cache maintenance. And there is also, when you do DMA on your device, it's not, not coherent. <coughs> um, so we provide a lot of ways to, uh, to, um, to interact with the cache. So this is mostly general privilege uh, operations. So you can invalidate the instruction cache, data cache. <coughs> you can clean the data cache. You can clean and invalidate the data cache. On, we offer two ways to uh, do the cache maintenance, either by virtual address or by set way. Um, the problem of set way, set way is local to a CPU. So if you have multiple CPU running on that platform at the same time, you will break the cache. Uh, <coughs> there is no way to do, there is no all operations on the de uh, data cache side. So there is on one instruction side. So the data cache, what you have to do is going all over all the set way, all the level, and you will have to invalidate one by one. Um, when I mean by one by one, is set way by set way. <coughs> on, 
it should only be used for bringing up on shutting down um, a CPU in general. On the last thing, so the most important thing, is not how well have um, implement set way. So when I was giving the example earlier on about the LCD system cache, there is no way for a system cache to, uh, to invalidate through set way. So the only way to invalidate the system cache is by virtual address. So, which means pretty much that same way is not possible to virtualize, at least easily, a bit more later on. The only, so the only way to, uh, to perform cache maintenance outside of bring up and power down is by virtualize. So, no, that's a cache, normal, without virtualization. So, you add no, another layer of complexity with the virtual, um, the virtual machine. Virtual machine was they provide a second tier of space table, um, a second set of memory attributes. On, um, for instance, on then we always map the RAM in stage two as cacheable. Um, so what happened if the stage one decided to disable the cache or things like that? Um, the memory attribute will get combined between the stage one, so the page table from the guest, on the page table, stage two page table, they will get combined. So. Um, for the memory, the stronger the memory win, which means that if you use a device on your stage one, on mem normal memory on your stage two, it will be a device on this versa. The least cacheable memory attributes wins also. So if you say, um, if you put non cacheable somewhere, it's always on first. On the last thing is the hypervisor doesn't have any control on this. There is, no, there is some global control, but uh, there is nothing very fine going to, uh, to do it. So let's give an example to try to understand what's exactly the problem. On, I think the best example is using a Linux 32-bit, uh, good example. So when you put a 32-bit guess um, on 64-bit host, where there is the ISOE system cache, um, what Linux is doing at the moment on 32-bit is it's a compressed kernel, so you will put the compressed kernel on the, in, uh, in memory, you will jump on the beginning of the compressed kernel, it will try to de decompress itself. So what it will do, it will enable the cache, uh, decompress the image, um, turn off the cache, and then clean the, uh, clean the memory using a um, set way, and then jump to the payloads. What could be wrong? Um, so if you look on this, so when we do a clean first step, it will go from the it will go from the data cache level one to level three. When we do the full clean level by level, uh, but when the guest is sitting in level three, but when you disable the cache, what you do is you bypass you bypass all the cache, which means that the get, when the guest will try to execute, it will try to execute from the RAM. So you don't get, you get stale data or you get wrong data, which may crash, potentially. Um, no, imagine you put that in a virtualized environment. There is no easy way to virtualize, uh, to, to directly use set way the guest. First thing, system cache, otherwise playing it before. And then a vCPU can be right. Otherwise depending, set way, is a patch on the vCPU can be rewritten in the middle because this is a solution by solution on the scheduler can decide anything is ever done. So it can the vCPU can be moved to another vCPU but that cache would not be cleaned. So what could be the solution here? Well the, the solution is we need to trap all the operation and convert them to a virtual address space, a virtual address operation. There is no way uh, to infer a set way, to infer the virtual address from a set way, because this is by from every platform, this is not specified in the architecture. So the only way is to go through all the memory of the guest, step by step, on cleaning page by page every uh, it's an all the map page on every uh, every page cleaning to 
to the, to the cache. Thankfully, we only have to do that at boots, but it's still a pain. Imagine a guest with 5 giga of memory. Uh, so, um, that was an explanation about uh, what's going on on the architecture and what's going on on them. As I was mentioning, um, step wave suction are not happening on them today. Uh, this means that the gas is directly acting on the gas, cache. Uh, we noticed last year on the OSS test uh, that uh, sometimes it was questioning, we don't know why that gets put. Uh, the best bet was set way uh, are not hard, which means that potentially on heavy, heavy loads, if the gas is migrating, they will just have uh, a crash or stand up. Uh, so basically, any guests using Setway on them today are unsafe. They can crash at any moment, which means Linux 32 bits and um, also, as far as I'm aware, um, EFI is still using the Setway uh, at the beginning. And we just pray that it works. Uh, so, uh, as I say, first thing is that we need to clean the memory at every trapping tra 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 Uh Every map patch. Is there any problem? Well, yes. That is mapping all the memory by default. When you boot, you allocate the memory and you, you map everything. That's, that's a lot of page to clean. Second thing is 32 bit Linux is using Segway during CPU wake up. On, when you put a signal on the CPU, they expect like a timeout of, uh, I think it's one second. To, uh, so if the CPU is not bringing up after one second, they will stop. So we have to clean all the memory in less than one second. <laughs> not possible at all. <laughs> not at all. Uh, after all, with 512 megabytes, on, no, it was <laughs> too slow. Uh, Second thing is, the good thing is that we, um, every time we allocate memory to the guest, uh, we clean the page as the first time. So when we give a page to the guest, they are clean. Even when we load the kernel in memory, it's clean. Um, so we load the kernel in memory, then we clean. So as soon as the guest boots, it should be cleaned. So what we can do is uh, cleaning page only ones are used uh, since the last touch. <laughs> um, second thing is that we need to try to set way. As I was explaining, set way usually happen in batch of instruction uh, on before turning off on on the cache. If it's happening in batch, we don't want to do every set way instruction going through the memory on flushing everything. So we need to find a way to um, an approach that would allow to do at every set way to clean the memory because that would be like 500 megabyte, 500 megabyte, etc., which is really long. Um, one approach would be on the first set of instructions, we enable the virtual memory instruction. So ARM is providing a way to trap all the virtual memory uh, instructions. So like it's always um enabling the cache, enabling the MLU, uh, setting up the page table, etc. So you can trap those operations uh, to, to look for when the guest is disabling, enabling the cache. And then because the guest may disable the cache also right after, he's expecting the same way to clean the cache. We need to do a full clean of the cache. Um, second thing is that, well, the other set way, there is no point really to uh, to emulate them, we can't near them until the cache is toggled. So either turn off or turn on. And then on cache toggling, what you could do is doing a full clean of the cache, and then you turn off the trapping because the cache is turned on again, there is no point to do it. Uh, also, because trapping every uh, access to virtual memory has going to have a cost to the guest. 
Um, I don't want to go into much details here because I will not need half an hour. I will probably two hours to explain everything. Uh, so I would be happy to discuss afterward if someone is interested in other problem. Um, we started to discuss the approach on, in December 2017 uh, on the main list. Uh, there was different solution to go for it. None of them are really good. Uh, mostly because uh, we are sharing patch table with the IOM and use. So if we want to play with the patch table on ARM, uh, it may have an impact on the IOM and use. Um, I will try to post a bit more details soon on the main list. Um, I got a proof of concept uh, which works but will have some impact on the guests uh, using said way. I would just have to say that uh, you don't want to use said way in a guest. That will have an impact. That's not uh, Linux 32 bits, whatever can be uh, thought, is not actually to complain about that. Set way should only be used for CPU bring up mostly in the firmware. Um, so to conclude, so catch up on ARM, I just make it a, a block to make it faster. It's it's an essential part of the coherency protocol. So it's using if you decide to use uncached memory, explicitly bypass it, but you will have to cope with the consequences. So like doing man-man instructions <coughs> or having a course in your platform. Um, there is no magic involved at all. It's mostly following the architecture, making sure it's correct, then it's correct. On um, with the fabulous arm arm, it's just 7,000 pages. <coughs> um, you just have to digest that. Uh, yeah. Is there any question? One of the examples where you can see uh, how architecture can be complicated to use in software. So this is fixed now, is it? Or? I have a series. Uh, it's not fixed yet. Uh, I know that we have time to time seen on OSS test some uh, some bugs coming up. Um, we are just hoping that the next one will work. As far as I know, it's at the moment, I've only seen the program on the Kubitruck. Uh, I haven't seen that on the Amdel. And my guess is because the Kubitruck has only two CPU and we run like four or five, four or five BCPU at the same time. So there is a very a lot of uh, workloads which may migrate during the guest boots. Any other questions? Okay, thank you.